So during the following Christ retreat, specifically after the talk, We Are at War, the Devil, uh, the retreat provides an opportunity for everybody at the retreat to uh, do two things. One is to do the renewal of their baptismal promises and also to practice renunciation prayer. And we're going we're gonna to do that. It's really helpful to give our brothers and sisters an experience that allows them to really use renunciation prayer to fight the enemy. And the truth is we are in a battle against the devil, and we want to exercise the authority that we have in Christ. It's been given to us through our baptism. We do have that authority to battle. So later in this session, we'll get a chance to do some of that. Now, <clears throat> battling the enemy ought to be something very normal for us in our Christian lives, but often that is not the case for many of us. Either we don't know how to battle, or we may feel perhaps that we're not allowed to enter in to the battle. For some of our brothers and sisters, they don't even have the understanding or the recognition or acknowledgement that there is an enemy. They may be, have to be taught that as well. And the devil is alive, and he is active, and he needs to be battled. We're to resist the enemy. And we do need to engage in the battle individually for our own freedom in Christ. Paul tells us in Galatians 5.1, it was for freedom that Christ has set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be sub subject again to the yoke of slavery. So just to be clear, standing firm is a fighting stance. Freedom is our inheritance in Christ. We've been given this. It's been given to the church. We need to learn, as brothers and sisters, how to take back our freedom and to recover what was lost. As believers, we want Christ at the center of our life. As believers, we're always working towards conversion, right? We always need conversion day after day after day. And to be his disciple means to become like him. He's the master. We're the followers. So we renounce anything that we've identified with that doesn't belong to Christ. For many of us, I would say for all of us, we've gone through some difficult times. I've yet to meet a person who has gotten through life without getting nicked up along the way. We've been hurt. We've been wounded. We've had some things go badly in our life. And for many of us, that's left some baggage. We've been influenced by the enemy. And we've allowed him to get some footholds in our life. And there's some doorways that open ourselves to the influence of the evil one. And there's ways that we can give access to the enemy. And I'll just name some of them. This is not an exhaustive list. But one of them, and we're all familiar with this, is through sin and disobedience. We open the door. Unforgiveness is a door to the enemy. Unholy ties. Physical relationships outside of the context of sacramental marriage. Interaction with the occult, traumatic events. In 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Jesus came to set us free. That's what he wants for us. He wants our freedom. Some of you may be saying, well, you know, you're talking about deliverance and you're talking about renouncing the devil Is this okay for us to do? It is absolutely okay. And it's, you know, I could give you other resources, which I'm not going to go into now, but we are permitted uh, 
to operate in the area of deliverance as Christians. Now, some of you say, well, isn't that for the exorcist? So just to be clear, just to explain, exorcism, uh, you might say, is over here. (laughs) And temptation from the enemy would be on this side, right? And so exorcism occurs. Obviously, that's a... um, that's a right of the church. It, it's it's uh, done by the appointment of the bishop. The bishop appoints somebody who operates in the function of an exorcist. Uh, and But exorcism is typically required in those cases where people have lost the ability to control their will, or in some cases, the, the ability to control their bodies. It's a fairly uh, significant um, loss that the person has had to the enemy. And the church discerns those people that need that kind of, of prayer. It's, it's still pretty rare, albeit in the culture that we live in, I think it's becoming more common uh, as we open ourselves up more uh, to, to dark things. So, you know, short of that, we can operate, even the lady can operate uh, in, in the area of deliverance, just so that you understand that and can be comfortable. In the Archdiocese of Baltimore, Unbound Ministry Maryland is a sanctioned ministry within the Archdiocese. If you go to our website, you can see a beautiful um, testimony from Archbishop Laurie, uh, who supports it. So, if anybody has any concerns about that. It's also important to understand that the um, demonic influence in a person's life is normally an interaction between evil spirits, sin, um, emotional and psychological scars, relationships, um, and open doors to other things. So it's a very integrated thing, and that's why we always need discernment when we're praying with people in these kinds of areas. Um, Oftentimes, a pattern of sin will will turn into a pattern of of behavior or thinking that, that yields us uh, into just deeper bondage to things uh, where we have really opened the door for the enemy to harass us and to hold us back. Sometimes uh, traumas, changes uh, in life, uh, in key relationships that, that, that get um, destroyed or damaged can also open the doors um, to the lies of the enemy and, and open us up to uh, the influence of the work of the devil. I'll give you an example because it, it, it helps explain how, how things can work out. Uh, you, you have a situation where you have a father who is very domineering, uh, maybe a harsh uh, father, very demanding, uh, has a lot of anger. And so you have two sons. The one son's response to the father's anger and, you know, just cold heartedness towards him is he doesn't want to make any waves you know so he withdraws he escapes um, he tries to to be a perfectionist he's trying to perform because he knows if he does a perfect job that maybe he'll please his father the other boy uh, he's angry he's frustrated so he becomes defiant he becomes rebellious He stands up to the father, and he equals his anger and his rage. And so they can grow up in this situation, and that kind of pattern of behavior and thinking, based on the relationship that they had with their dad, can carry on to life. You know, the one man can turn into a perfectionist, feeling like he always has to please people, because if he doesn't please people, he'll bring wrath upon himself. Or maybe he withdraws and escapes from relationships where the other brother has a short fuse and he gets angry very quickly and he has problems with authority and he has these issues. And so these are patterns of thinking that can happen by virtue of the way that we grow up. It might be helpful just to share just a little bit about my own personal story. Most of us have lies that we believe about ourselves. So I was growing up, this is hard to believe now, but when I grew up, I was a really little guy. I mean, I was the smallest kid in my class up until seventh grade, right? Hard to believe. I was also really, I was young and I was immature. So my birthday was late November, but back when I went to school, 
you, you went by calendar year. Now, if you're born after August 1st, they push it in the next year, which is probably pretty wise. So here I am, I'm tiny, I'm young, I'm immature, and I struggle mightily in school. So all through elementary school, I'd be like, Mom, am I going to pass third grade? Oh, yeah, you're, you'll be okay, you'll get through. But so because I struggled so hard in school, and because I was just, you know, uh, underdeveloped emotionally and, and uh, intellectually, I was always behind the other kids, I formed at a very young age that I just didn't have what it takes. So here I am, this this little Danny, and I'm like, I don't have what it takes. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I got in trouble because I was immature, so I spent a lot of time in the principal's office. So I had this perception, it just wasn't very good. I didn't have what it takes. I didn't measure up. And so then I get to junior high. I start to catch up. I get to high school. I am on a roll society. I go to college. I graduate with honors. I go into business. I enjoy success in business. But what do, what do I think about myself? I don't measure up. I don't have what it takes. I'm not good enough. So that's the lie that was planted. And until I got some prayer and realized that was a root lie working in me, and when I renounced the lie, when I said in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounced the lie that I don't have what it takes, that I don't measure up, that I'm not good enough, for the first time in my life I realized it was a lie. I thought it was who I was. It was a lie that had threaded very young in my growing up, and I just thought that was who I was. It was the first time I realized, ooh, that wasn't me, right? That was a lie planted in me. And many of us have had these lies planted, maybe very young in our lives, that we've bought into, that we believe about ourselves. I can assure you, If I continued to maintain that lie, I wouldn't be standing up here, right? Because that wouldn't fit, right? I'm not good enough. I don't measure up. I can't do that. Ultimately, it's to rob me of my destiny. That's what it is. The lie is to rob me of walking in who I am as a Christian. So, renunciation. What does renunciation mean? This is what it means. It means I am done with it. I will not fellowship with that. I am throwing that off to the side. When we renounce things, that's what we're saying. I'm taking my life back. So when we renounce things, we're renouncing lies and things that have been at work in us that are holding us back. That's what we're renouncing. And so... uh, one f- friend put it this way. He, he found out that he got a diagnose, diagnosis with cancer. And you can imagine what you would experience if you're sitting in front of the doctor and he says you have cancer. He immediately felt an inwelling of fear coming over him. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce fear. I will not fellowship with you. He immediately took his freedom, right? And that's what we want to do. We want to take back our freedom. Freedom is a part of our heritage as believers. I won't go into this in depth. I think we heard it in one of the talks. Actually, Father Dale talked about this in in the church. But in the early centuries, this was a big part of formation. You spent years learning the scriptures. I mean, it was a couple years of the formation in the early centuries before you came into the church. And one of the reasons was they wanted you to go through formation, understand scripture, and to get deliverance because you were going to be in a community. You were going to be closely tied together together. You couldn't have, like, stuff going on, right? They didn't want any demonic influence in the community. So they went through a rigorous program of uh, deliverance and training to get people prepared. And then on that blessed day when they were, you know, baptized and immersed and came up, you know, they were free, right? They were in the kingdom of his beloved son, and they were ready. So... This is how we'll go about it. We'll, uh, we'll go through, and if, uh, if you will, what we'll do is we'll uh, just ratify. We've talked about this a couple times. We're going to ratify our relationship with the Lord just through uh, the baptismal promises. 
um, it's always good for us to declare Jesus Christ as our Lord. It is always good. Um, even though you've given your life to the Lord, to say it again and again is always a good thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the baptismal promises, and then I'm going to lead you through some renunciation prayer. Now, the things I'm going to lead you to renounce may not be necessarily things that are at work in you, okay? I've just selected some things to renounce, some lies. So it may not be your stuff. Uh, It'll be likely somebody's stuff in this room. But these are always good things to renounce. I always like to say renouncing things is like spiritual house cleaning. These are always good things to renounce. So we'll do that together. Now, I'll just ask you a quick question. So when, when you're sitting there and you're seeing, maybe you did this, maybe some of you went to the Easter vigil and you, you went through the confession of faith and, and Father led you and said, you know, do you reject Satan and all his works, you know, and all his empty promises? Have you ever given any thought to what they are in your life? Man, is it, have you, has it ever made you ponder? In recent years, it has made me ponder. What is he after in me? Where have I given in to weakness? So anyway, let's do that. Let's stand up now. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, the father of sin and the prince of darkness? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth of water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So when I lead you through the renouncing, we're going to do that in the name of Jesus. There's only one name that has power, and that's the name of Jesus. So when we do this, We always do it in the name of Jesus because it's in his person, his authority, and his character, right, that we do these things. So we'll just close our eyes for a second and just invite the Lord to come as we uh, walk through this. And you'll repeat after me. In the name of Jesus... I renounce a spirit of pride. In the name of Jesus, I renounce self righteousness. In the name of Jesus, I renounce self justification. In the name of Jesus, I renounce unforgiveness. In the name of Jesus, I renounce a spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus, I renounce fear of man. In the name of Jesus, I renounce fear of the future. In the name of Jesus, I renounce fear of failure. In the name of Jesus, I renounce fear of provision. In the name of Jesus, I renounce anxiety. In the name of Jesus, 
I renounce worry and stress. I renounce worry and stress. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce a spirit of anger. I renounce a spirit of anger. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce hatred. I renounce hatred. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce resentment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce envy. I renounce envy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce lust. I renounce lust. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce impurity. I renounce impurity. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce pornography. I renounce pornography. In the name of Jesus. I renounce self-condemnation. I renounce self-condemnation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce self-hatred. I renounce self-hatred. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce self-rejection. I renounce self-rejection. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce worthlessness. I renounce worthlessness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce oppression. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I, renounce I renounce emptiness. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I, renounce I renounce isolation. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I renounce depression. I renounce depression. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I renounce slander. I renounce slander. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I renounce gossip. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce judgment. I renounce judgment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce prejudice. I renounce prejudice. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce control. I renounce control. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce occult practices. I renounce occult practices. In the name of Jesus. I renounce addiction to alcohol. In the name of Jesus. I renounce addiction to drugs. In the name of Jesus. I renounce materialism. In the name of Jesus. I renounce discouragement. In the name of Jesus. I renounce disappointment. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that I'm not good enough, that I don't measure up, that I don't have what it takes. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that I will never amount to anything. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that I am unlovable. In the name of Jesus. I renounce the lie that God doesn't love me. In the name of Jesus. I renounce the lie that I have to earn God's love. That I have to perform. It's a lie. In the name of Jesus. I renounce the lie that something is wrong with me. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that I am a mistake. It's a lie. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that I don't belong. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that I'm a failure, that I failed as a parent, that I failed as a spouse. Now, by virtue of your baptism, when you renounce that in the name of Jesus Christ, it is real. Those things have to go. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to join my faith to your faith and say a prayer of authority. 
So in the name of Jesus Christ, I break the power of every spirit and every related spirit that you have renounced and every lie that you've renounced. And I command it to go now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I just want to close with a prayer that's in the book. Just to explain, when we renounce things, we've literally, we've taken things, lies and things in our heart, and now we're actually uh, materially more free in our spirit to hear the truth about who we are. Um, So I'll just say this prayer in thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus into the world to destroy the work of the devil. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for opening our eyes to the ways the devil has been influencing our lives. Holy Spirit, we thank you for freeing us to live under the Lordship of Jesus our Savior. We praise you, Holy Trinity, for your victory this day in our lives. We pray all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.